Hello, today we are going to look at mathematical proof methods. If you haven't studied mathematical proof methods, also known as formal proofs before, you might ask, what exactly are they? Well, what, what do I mean by mathematical proof? Well, have you ever tried to prove something uh, to prove that it was true? If you're trying to prove a statement uh, was true or something about something was true, do you just try to prove it for one case of that something? Well, what if you have to prove it for a whole bunch of uh, uh, things, a series of input? Would you then just test it for all uh, that each individual uh, input that y you could have? Well, you could, but it would take a long time. And it would be impossible if you had an infinite number of input. For example, if you're trying to test that all numbers greater than zero are div divisible by one, well, how would you prove that formally? It, it might make sense to you and me, but how would you prove it? Well, we would use a mathematical proof for that. Mathematical proofs are a formal way to prove a mathematical statement is true for a large, possibly infinite, number of cases. Instead of testing for each individual possible case, this allows us to prove it is true for everything all at once, with logic. We can also use this f uh, formal way of proving something to disprove something. Uh, there are many uh, different ways to uh, prove something with, uh, formally, and we'll discuss a few of the basic ones today. Note that actually doing the proof correctly takes a lot of practice and understanding. And for different professors, if you're doing this for a class, they, they might uh, do it differently uh, depending on uh, who, who they are or how they understand. Uh, we're going to look at some of the basic methods today, but assume that don't just assume that it's easy once you've understood what we're talking about. You should practice on your own too. Okay, today we're going to look at five different uh, methods of proof. We're going to look at direct proof, proof by contradiction, indirect proof, fascist uh, proof, and trivial proof. And note that if you're trying to prove, uh, if you have a question you're trying to prove or a statement, uh, you could use any, in, uh, you don't necessarily have to use one, just one of these. You could do it in different ways. Uh, but uh, if you, it, sometimes one way is uh, shorter than another way, so you have to be able to recognize that if you're really good at it. Okay, direct proof. This is uh, the common one. It's the most uh, s simplest. Now, suppose you're trying to prove a statement that A implies B, or something like that. Well, you would assume A to be true to begin with, and then you would somehow show that B must be true uh, based on A being true. Proof by contradiction. So basically, proof by contradiction uh, uh, says suppose you have a statement M to be true, you assume uh, the opposite of M to be true instead, and then you somehow try to find a logical contradiction. Okay, indirect proof. Suppose you are trying to prove a statement A implies B. Well, you would act prove you would prove the opposite. You would sort of switch the values. You would say, okay, assume that you would prove the o opposite of B implies the opposite of A. Fascist proof. Suppose you're trying to prove a statement A implies B. Well, you would try to prove that A implies false, or that A is always false. If something is false, then you can say that it implies anything, technically, because it can't be disproven unless it, A was true to begin with. And trivial proof. Suppose you were trying to prove a statement A implies B. You could prove that, but uh, you could prove this by proving that B always implies true. If B is always true, then you could say that anything would imply it to be true, since nothing can ever imply it to be false. Also note, uh, when completing a proof like these, uh, mathematical proof, it helps to know some of the bas basic operational symbols, such as and, or, not, or, implies. Uh, you heard me use implies and not uh, before already. If you don't know what that means, uh, I've listed them out, uh, basically what they mean down here. And if you don't know what they mean, you should go back to review what you might have learned in class. If you never learned this in class, then I would recommend uh, researching further on this. 
Okay, now I'm going to show you a, a simple example. I want to prove that for all integers, if the integer n is even, then n squared, or n times n, is also even. Now think about that. That makes sense to you and me. We could probably think about it in our head and say, yeah, that seems to make sense. But how would you prove that to someone somehow, formally? Well, okay, the first example here I'm going to use direct proof. Okay, I say let n be an even int integer. We assume n to be even. And we have to now prove that n times n is even. Well, if n is even, which we assumed, we can then rewrite it to be equal to 2k, where k is some other integer. Now, this is a common practice to uh, rewrite uh, or symbolize an even number, because even numbers are always divisible by 2. So now this implies that n times n would be 2k times 2k, which is then equal to 4 times k times k, which we could rewrite to 2 times 2 times k times k, which is a form of an even number, because you are multiplying 2 by something. Therefore, n times n is even, and therefore we have proven if we assumed n to be even, then n times n is also even. Good. Now I'm going to do the same question again with proof by contradiction. Suppose that n is even, but n times n is also odd. Well, then we can rewrite n is equal to 2k, which is an even number, and n times n is equal to 2j plus 1, which is another uh, way to symbolize an odd number. Now, since uh, n is equal to 2k, we can rewrite n times n to be 2k times 2k, equaling 2 times something which is even, similar to what we had in the previous example. But we assumed at the beginning that n times n is an odd number. So therefore we've sort of just proved that even an even number is equal to an odd number. Which we know is impossible. That that's a contradiction. And therefore what well, what our contradic uh, contradictory uh, assumption at the beginning must be false. So that is impossible to say that n is even and n times n is odd. Therefore uh, and if n is even, then n times n must be even. Okay, I'm going to do one more here with indirect proof. Uh, this isn't a perfect example of how to use it, but it sort of makes sense. Uh, prove that if not n times n is even, then not n is even. Now what that means is that we're assuming n times n to be odd at the beginning, and we have to prove somehow that n would be odd. Okay then. So it makes sense that if n times n is odd, it, it makes sense that n by, by itself must be even or odd. That's sort of a property of all numbers. If n was even, then we could rewrite it as n equal to 2j, and n times n would be 2 times something, which could not possibly be re rewritten as 2k plus 1. Therefore, n cannot be even, uh, else we'd have a contradiction with our uh, previous statement. If n was odd, then we can write n as 2j plus 1, and then n times n would, uh, we would get something that would be, could be rewritten as 2 something plus 1. Therefore, n could be odd. Since n cannot be even, then it can be odd, it must only be able to be odd. Therefore, if n times n is odd, then n is odd. And therefore, we, by using indirect proof, we have proven if n is even, then n times n is even. Now, like I said, this isn't a uh, perfect example, but it's more or less what we're, we're aiming for. And that's about all I have to teach you. Uh, remember, understanding uh, what we've done here, uh, what we've shown you, is only part of the problem. You always have to keep practicing this. A lot of mathematicians and computer scientists uh, do uh, have problems with this from time to time. But this is, is important to uh, their fields. So just keep practicing, and the more you practice, the more you'll understand, and the better you'll do overall. Thanks for watching.